Hey everybody, it's senior editor Kevin Van Ord. I'm here with Eric Tay, and we just came back from seeing Command and Conquer. And I'm a big Command and Conquer guy. You not so much, but you are a big StarCraft guy and other yep. RTS guy. So before I kind of launch into my thing about what I thought about Command and Conquer, I thought I'd ask you, because you had a chance to not just watch, but also to play. And I'm kind of curious what you thought. Sure. Um, so, I mean, it was, it was weird kind of going back to Command and Conquer, just because I did play a long time ago. But like you said, I've been playing more StarCraft now. So my mind is in StarCraft mode. So I was trying right. to play it like StarCraft. And, um, you know, it, it has a lot of the same kind of mechanics, but it's just kind of weird seeing, like, different, like the different placements of, you know, hotkeys for buildings or hockey for units right. and, and naming conventions. Like, it's a barracks. Well, there's a barracks in StarCraft, but, you know, there's the War Factory, you know? Right. And they're close, but it's just, they're different. The layout's different, and it's kind of just getting back into it. And it was interesting. Um, I didn't get it too much time because somehow I managed to kind of just start to get going and building out my facilities yeah. right when you ended. But it, it looks amazing. It looks great. Well, the good news is that it's not StarCraft. And I think for a Command and Conquer fan, that's that's important to know. Um, you know, the interface looks very much the same way. I mean, we're still working. So this is for people that don't know. This is the, the this is Generals Two, um, but renamed to be simply Command and Conquer. But we're still looking at kind of the same three factions as the original Command and Conquer Generals, with the difference that the U.S. faction has been replaced by the EU faction. And they made a little bit of a deal over saying, hey, you know, the GLA, they're not quite as racist as they were before. <laughs> you know, they're not all Middle Eastern. They don't all make, they don't make that comment about, like, not having shoes. Uh, they, they have actually shoes wear now. shoes. They, have, they yeah. have shoes now. Um, so, but importantly, you know, how did it play, number one? And it played, I, you know, I spent about, I, I played two matches against the AI. Um, what they had available there was, um, was matches against the AI or cooperative matches. Um, in which, which was basically a horde RTS mode um, with multiple people holding off and defending um, against the AI. So I didn't play that mode. I played a standard skirmish against the AI. And it was very, it was remarkably familiar to what I know from Command and Conquer. Um, so if you know Command and Conquer, you'll feel pretty at home. Um, but I did get a chance to talk with the creative director afterwards. And I think some things to note are number one, you know, obviously this is a free-to-play game, and I and I know that that has people sort of up in arms, and I can't say I blame them, you know, especially because Command and Conquer has this tradition of really over-the-top storytelling and FMV and all that kind of stuff. So I I get that because this doesn't have a story-based campaign, and I asked him specifically like, how do you build a world around that? And and he didn't get into a whole lot of specifics. No, but he didn't. I have to say I I think that they know at least that the game needs to have attitude. And the game clearly had an attitude based on what I played, based on what we saw in the trailer that they showed us. Um, so you have the general, you know, you have the generals, and they're not FMV, unfortunately. They were they were digitized generals, yeah. but they had they had catchphrases, and they were obviously trying to get a little personality in there. Yeah, and they each have their own skill sets, and you know, you level up your general as you go. So yeah. it'll be kind of interesting to see because you know they are going to add more generals because, as you said, it is a free-to-play game but part of what they're building out is you know more generals but it's not going to be pay to win he made that you know well fact at least that's what he says and, that, and that's that's the trick here is like when you say it's not going to be pay to win what does that really mean and, and hopefully you know the the team at victory games can really live up to that idea which is like we don't want that in rts we want this to truly be competitive and i think people are still feeling a little turned off of command and conquer after command and conquer 4 specifically and then out of you know you know, browser-based Command and Conquer that came after, and so I think people that really like Command and Conquer are worried. And what I played felt so Command and Conquer that I that I might even say, hey, you know, give it a chance because yeah. I gave it a chance and I was happy with what I played yeah. because it played exactly like I want Command and Conquer to play. And maybe um, now that you know it is free to play, it kind of reduces the barriers of entry, and maybe. it can kind of hopefully get people back into it. But we'll have to see what kind of the direction it goes in, you know, down the road, uh, that we're not, that's not going to be a pay to win and that, you know, it's going to be the game they want it to be. Yeah, and they, they do want to add stuff. They want to add different modes, different, obviously, as you said, different generals. And because uh, I'm curious to see, like, if, how you get invested, like what this, this metagame is going to be that keeps people in there. And, and Victory Games doesn't ha actually know exactly how this metagame is going to work yet. 
Um, so they haven't made final decisions, so they're not announcing anything. So we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, but overall, you know, I was uh, I'm less worried about Command and Conquer than I might have been before, yeah. and that's that's actually a good sign. I had a good time with what I played, and uh, I got thoroughly murdered by marauding AI. Um, you were just unlucky, apparently. I really was. They they <laughs> did say, you know, I think you got you really got some hard AI going after you. So, um, so th so there was that. But uh, definitely looking forward to it. Um, it's in it's in pre-alpha now, so uh, hopefully we'll have more soon. Um, but if you have questions, what you want to do is use Twitter and use hashtag GameSpot E3, and we'll be happy to answer whatever questions come across on the stage show and beyond. And uh, stay tuned. We'll have more check-ins. And Eric, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see you soon.